this strange noise just now. You can kill me. It's a little guy. It's a little tiny guy. Damn, it's really spiking in temp. Oh! This might be the solo investigation I never come back from. Hey! hey, 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 hey. Oh my god! I have evidence from the Missouri State Penitentiary. It's Becky and Michelle. And we have evidence from Missouri State Penitentiary. I suddenly felt like somebody was watching me. Mm-hmm. Across like my the back. I was standing up on my hot A stick figure show up on the Somebody pulling on my pant leg. I'm like to find this unexplained shape. Can you guys investigate? Welcome to the season premiere of Ghost Files, where we take your evidence and our tools into the field to expose the supernatural. My partner, a skeptic. Ha! Myself, a believer. Both of us, truth seekers. This week, our team travels to Jefferson City, Missouri to investigate the Missouri State Penitentiary. Good fucking lord. Quite large for a prison. Yeah. This is a monster. Gotta be one of the more foreboding locations we've been to. Well, (laughs) I'm gonna fucking hate this. (laughs) I'm gonna lose my mind in here alone. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I just won't do it this time. You know, this is your job, you know. You gotta get in there. Oh, okay, and the doors are closing. That's... Holy shit. Let's get to it. Let's check out the gift shop. Opening its bars in 1836, Missouri State Penitentiary served as the oldest prison west of the Mississippi for almost 170 years. For context, it was already 100 years old when Alcatraz was just opening. Prisoners were brutally punished, whether it be via waterboarding, solitary confinement for years, or lashes from glass and metal laden cat of nine tails. Sort of a sexy way to punish someone, right? Not when it's, uh, you know, laced with metal and glass. Yeah. The prison has seen a riot, escape attempts, and executions, contributing to its nearly 2,000 lives lost on the grounds, earning it the moniker of the bloodiest 47 acres in America by Time Magazine. The prison sits right next to the Missouri River, atop the aforementioned 47 bloody acres. It's one of the largest prisons in the US, and in 1935, housed twice its capacity, with 5,300 inmates sleeping seven to a cell that was infested with rats and maggots nicknamed The Walls on account of its iconic and imposing Gothic design. The prison is surrounded by large stone blocks. There's four main buildings, three of which are available to investigate. And because I need more order in my life, we'll be starting with building one and working our way up numerically. We've also placed cameras and audio recorders in two very active parts of the building in hopes that we catch activity when we're elsewhere. One in the cinder block office between two wings of housing unit three, where insane evidence of an apparition was submitted to us. And the other in the halls of death row, for obvious and unfortunate reasons. And finally, to end the investigation, Shane and I will each be forced to explore this entire massive building one at a time, because getting your steps in is extra effective when you think you're gonna die. It's been a while since we went to a prison, so I'm I'm pretty psyched. A year, exactly, actually. And once again, another location near Missouri River. It's full of ghosts. (laughs) Full of ghosts. Our first stop is inside housing unit one by the control room. Every single prisoner would have gone through this building. This is where a spirit known as Fast Jack is usually sighted. Does he sprint through the place? Yeah, he's like really fast. He makes fast people look not fast. My name's Jack, bye. Yeah, he's like Dash, that little boy from The Incredibles. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) It was the nickname of a lab technician that worked at the prison who was known to always be pacing around. He usually wears a white lab coat and holds a clipboard. Nowadays, he's known to briefly appear from walls before hitting the road and not coming back. Either way, Jack may be fast, but the ghoul boys are faster. Oh shit, he's fast. fast that was? Real fast, he's real fast. That's right. Oh god damn! If I ever do see an apparition, I'm grabbing it. Well, you know, season two. I'm grabbing it. All right, so this is the control room. 
Very neat to see one of these looking as cartoonish as this does. It looks like a Guardians of the Galaxy that thing. Funny who's, guy. Who's this? Who's His this? eyes darted towards me though. Sir, now's your chance. Little oh, bitch. This is where Fast Jack is seen. In fact, this is the hallway where he is known to come in and out of those walls. And they're as solid as can be, as far as I can tell. No, they're not phony walls. Jack. Jack. You gotta say fast. Fast, Jack. Jack! Hmm, from the way he's moving, I would call him Slow Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? What if we turn our backs and give him the opportunity to That's run true. by real fast? Oh, he hey, buds. He has no idea we could see him. Look at these buds. <laughs> you fuck yourself. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, whoa, whoa. I don't know what's happening right now. Is that now. Morse code? F. A. My, F my flashlight is freaking the fuck. Oh, T. Should I just put batteries in this thing? That does have a strobe mode, but that doesn't appear to be it. No. Jack, are you here right now? Jack, is that you? Jack, if that's you, turn it on. Now off. Okay, that's him. Okay, you know what? Let's bring out some tools here. Jack, we got some tools. You might like these. You didn't think I'd pull out one of these, did you? You didn't think we had that kind of budge? We got the budge, Jack. It's season two, baby. The REM pod creates its own circular electromagnetic field and will alarm when anything penetrates that field. The more colors on the alarm, the more significant the intrusion. The REM pod also detects temperature fluctuations. We're gonna put the REM pod over there so if Jack's doing his little nonsense over there, we'll catch him on the REM pod. Meanwhile, we're over here trying to talk to him. Your on light the is... tone spirit box. What in the world is happening here? You did put fresh batteries in that. I'm confirming you put fresh batteries in it's it. Fine now. So Jack, this is a spirit box with a little speaker called the honey tone on it. Basically, you could use this device to speak to us. The spirit box rapidly scans radio signals to create white noise through which spirits can communicate. And the honey tone filters out the noise while amplifying only the voices. Hello. All right, Jack, my name's Ryan. I'm Shane. What was your uh, favorite thing to, what was your favorite thing about working here, Jack? Hot. What'd you like about working here? Or did you not like working here? Do you know you're dead? Sometimes they don't. You know, it's good to let them know. Maybe he's not here, my light's normal right now. You're dead, dude. Jack here? It's Jack, yeah. Is you. that you? Do you like moving through walls? It's Jack, yeah. Who is that screaming person? Sounded a little like Nelly Furtado, but we'll let that slide. What's your favorite song? If you start singing Promiscuous, I'll pop lock for you. Hey Jack, can you move towards that red light in the distance over there? Or if you're at the end of the hall, could you come towards my voice? <laughs> so the uh, temperature just spike Like that? Did you just say like that? I was rubbing it in your face. Yeah, could you do it again? No? Why not? Do you want us to leave? The timing on that beeping was really, uh, really strong. Do you want to walk towards that light again? We'll leave if you do so. Walk towards the red light at the end of the hall. Or anybody at the end of that hall who wants us to leave, come towards us. Very easy thing for you to do. Just walk toward that red light. Ooh. Okay, lights are off now. Is that, you like that better? Uh, grab the little antenna with your... Yeah, grab the antenna. Go grab that little red light and the antenna. <laughs> oh, damn, it's really, okay, so it's really spiking in temp. Is this, I feel like this is the most freaked out you've been. Dude, fuck this place already, dude. My heart's beating so fast. Okay, well, we're gonna move on to a, a different room. Feel free to follow us. You're a fast guy. I'm gonna walk towards that. Don't push me or anything. Are you talking to me Any or Jack? I'm talking to Jack. Okay, I hope you know I wouldn't push you. Jesus Christ, it's already starting. Okay. 
Well, good start to the investigation. A really exciting start. Really glad that we have s several more hours to be locked inside. I, I genuinely have not seen you this rattled in, in it's been a minute. For me, it's delightful. For, I think for the folks at home, they're all having a good time. You're doing a great service right now. Thank you. Let's go check out more of this prison. Our next area are the Housing Unit 1 cell blocks, where the women prisoners were housed. These halls are filled with ghostly activity, from a ghostly figure who has been spotted wearing vintage clothing, to a thirsty Class A EVP that has been reported saying, quote, somebody cut me apart. Wait, hang on. Are they saying, hey, someone has done this to me? Or are they saying, somebody cut me apart, Oh, please. I see what you're saying. It could be, how did you die? Somebody, Somebody cut, cut me, me apart, me. but it could be cut just, me apart. Daddy. It could, yeah, it could be just yeah. unprompted, just unsolicited. Like, Rip me open. Is there anything you'd like to say to us? Somebody cut me apart. Somebody slice me. <laughs> and it's also here where Scott Gaddis and Ghost Duck Investigations captured this startling footage of a full-bodied apparition on the fourth floor. I hope you're ready. By the way, we got to get a better keyboard because this one's starting to just show its age a little bit. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it looked like a guy wearing jeans. I thought it kind of looked like somebody in like, like a, a uh, prisoner garb. It's one of those situations where, again, we're taking these clips at face value and assuming that the people who submit them are submitting them in earnest and saying, yes, there was no one there when we took this clip. It certainly just looks like they pan the camera past a person standing there wearing some Tommy Buhama shirt. <laughs> I mean, that's what a ghost looks like. When I saw a ghost, it looked like a guy. So, you know, it's one of those situations, like you said, this is where the believers and the skeptics kind of just draw a line in the sand. And there's only one real way to kind of uh, corroborate that, and that's doing it ourselves. Doing it ourselves, doing let's... it the only way we know how. So let's break out the net and catch our own FBA. So we're on our way to the top of cell block one where the apparition was caught on camera. That's gonna be fun by your lonesome later. No, it's not. There's nothing about this place that has any part of it that's related to the word fun. What the fuck is that noise? It appears to be some sort of large bird. This will be the blind cell. Oh, this is one of the more horrifying cells in the prison. Oh yeah, look, there's no lights, just a brick wall. Let's pop in there, check out the vibes. Let's pop those lights off. Mm. Oh yeah, this would be extremely unpleasant. Tight, tight, tight. All right, well, I've had enough of that. Yeah, why don't we see what else is out to... Let's go try and capture this apparition. All right, so we're going up to the fourth floor where Scott Gaddis and Ghost Duck Investigation sent us that clip of the apparition. Boy, Scott Gaddis really got his cardio in. He's got some thick calves. You should say something? No. A whoop? What, a whoop? No, I didn't hear a whoop. Wait, I thought for sure you were fucking like making a noise. Whoop. Like that, that's what it no, sounded like. I didn't do that. I'm just really good at sort of noises. I'm gonna have a heart attack here, dude. So when Scott Gaddis was walking along the fourth floor here, he was moving this way, and he turned right kind of near this little metal thing, and in the turn, he saw the apparition standing right there. Don't do it yet. Don't oh, do it yet. Okay. I was just practicing. So on the count of three, you're gonna do that. Or when we get to there. Oh, you're excited about this. You got All a little smirk. Here we go. Just walking down the cell block, hope no one's sneaking up behind us. Certainly can't see behind us at all. No. Well, you didn't, Count to three. Oh, I just said I thought. We, okay, it. okay. Well, now we ruined. You were it. all about the count okay, of three. Let's try it one more time. Can't see behind us. Can't see behind us. Sure Nothing as hell. That we can see. The best thing I could see right now is. Four. Shoot. We'll okay, have to review we'll the have footage. To we'll have to review the footage. So we just heard a little noise here. We heard a little noise. This is also where an EVP was caught of somebody saying, "Somebody cut me." Uh, what happened? Did you get cut here? Did somebody get cut up here? I mean, knowing the prison, I'm gonna guess they got shivved or something. Is that what the noise was that we heard? The, ooh, oh! Was that the noise? Was that you getting cut? You're a ghost now, so you don't have to like relive getting stabbed all the time. You can just float around and yeah. chill. Yeah. FYI. 
Just want you to know I'm your friend. Me too. He's lying. Are we doing a good cop, bad cop thing? Sure. I'm not your friend. You go to hell. Well, mm. there's some really bad stuff that happened yeah. here, so I don't want to say that. We're gonna try and use our SLS cam to capture this figure on camera, perhaps. The SLS cam uses a grid of infrared light to recognize human-like objects in front of it, even in complete darkness. Oh, do you want me to do my SLS yeah. impression? Yeah, do your SLS impression. Look, oh yeah, there he goes. Look at it, look at that skeleton go, folks. That's a good looking skeleton. Okay, for the gentleman who often is seen up here, would you mind uh, coming out to talk? We just want to talk. I know you probably weren't treated very well here, so. Did you get stabbed in the, in the, in the body? Um, if you got stabbed, uh, show up and do a little dance. Oh, yo, what the fuck was that? There was like some weird like tangle. Is there somebody over there or something over there? Oh, there it's back. Look, it's a little guy. It's a little tiny guy. Ooh. Sort of. Oh, and he bounced away. Sort of hot stepping. Oh, oh, but he's back. It looks like he's doing a little dance for us. What exactly honestly. is that? Who, what are you? Look at it go. You're like the little monkey from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. I'm gonna walk towards it. You're walking toward the monkey? Careful, you might get bit. Is there a little monkey here? Well, this certainly looks nightmarish on the SLS. Yeah, it is a long, dark uh, hallway. We are gonna head to a different part of the prison now. So, for whoever had the uh, indigestion there at the end of the hallway, I hope you find a Tums. Oh, look, our little friend's back. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, he's gone. We got friends over here, too. Oh, it's the pigeon. What's up, dude? Oh, there's two. There's three. Oh my god, oh wow, there's, they're multiplying. We all share in the prison tonight, okay? I know you're doing your own thing, but we're doing our thing. So let's just try and stay out of each other's hair, okay? Love birds, Capiche? love what you guys do. Hey, wait a second. Okay, fellas, let's not get hairy here. All right. Hey, 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 all right, hey let's get buddy on. boy. Let's all keep right. it moving. Housing unit three is our next building to investigate. But before we go deep into our exploration, we are going to attempt to recreate this piece of truly chilling video evidence sent to us by Michelle Elliott and Rebecca Mooney. You're gonna like this one a lot, big boy. I'm excited. Our footage is from a cinder block office situated between the two wings of general population. Upon review of our video, you can see a couple of figures run across the screen in the doorway and go back the other way. I think they want to believe that that's a person. It's very likely people were just walking by and they just weren't keeping track of what was going on. Skeptics are always clamoring for, I want some solid evidence, some solid proof. Yeah, and, we are. And then when it's shown. No, that's not solid evidence or proof. It's a, if there it's was, a, it's if a video that someone recorded. If there was no people there though. Do we have other angles? Do we have like robust logs of what happened in that building? Regardless of what either of us think, we're gonna set up our own camera, we're gonna lock down the area, and we're gonna see if we can capture it because that's what we do at Ghost Files. That's what we do, and we do it together because we're pals. Don't you fucking touch we're me. We're pals! Don't you touch we me! We have fun out there! Get your hand off me! You know, I was just thinking that this is actually kind of lovely if you look over at the moon. You got the moon on the left, the and you could kind of pretend you're in a nice little park. And then you look to your right, and you're like, oh, no, that's right, I'm in hell. Oh, we're in a fucking prison. Okay. So up here is where Michelle Elliott and Rebecca Mooney caught that pretty amazing figure right through this little door here. So we're gonna set up our static camera right here. Now that's it. That's the shot. Which means that makes sense why they would just see the little heads in the background because that's right where the front that's right. door is. Yeah, it's a tough sell for me, honestly. I gotta be honest. Yeah. We'll see what happens. To the shock of nobody. I know. <laughs> you know, hey, you know, if we see, you know, like sort of old timey prisoner in some stripy uh, pajamas. Yeah, yeah. While we didn't pick up the definitive figure of a guy in stripy pajamas, our static cam left in this spot did pick up what appears to be two glowing eyes. And they're moving. And furthermore, our camera picks up footsteps and what sounds like someone tampering with the camera, followed by a voice that perhaps says, I'm here. And 
six seconds later, we pick up this strange ball of light that coincides with a clanking noise in the distance. Housing Unit 3 is where Death Row resides. This area is also supposedly home to shadow people that peek out of the cells, hence the nickname Peekers. Mm, I'd like to peep some peekers. Yeah, very creative name there. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh. They peek out of the wall. <laughs> on I like that. I'd love to see these little shadow babies. The exception being a very tall shadow man who doesn't peek at all and has been seen at the very end of the death row hallway. This is also where Anna Ornsby encountered the grinning man. Let's hear from Anna what happened to her at the pen. We went to the penitentiary and in the C hall or the death row building, they turned off the lights on us and they told us just stare ahead and see if you can see any shadows, which your eyes will make shadows. So I didn't take that very much to heart. So they told us to turn around and we did. And there was a grown man in between my friend and I's shoulder, grinning from ear to ear with a lieutenant's cap on, even though there were only women behind us. It was terrifying. So afterwards we went home, drew what we thought we saw, and we drew the exact same thing. It was crazy. I don't know how to explain it. You turn around to say something and as soon as you turn around, you just see, yeah, just standing in between you just right there, like, ah, Jesus Christ, how she, scary that would be. Did she send in the drawing of what she drew? If she still has that drawing, I'd like to see it. I mean, I'm sure it's burned into her memory, so she could probably it's at least probably re true. She could probably reproduce like, it. it. I like, you know, how discerning she is. Well, let's see if we can find this grinning man ourselves. Oh, there he is. So now we're going down to death row. Obviously not the most pleasant of places. Yeah, it looks like, um, sort of most other places in this prison, but I guess there's an added weight to the fact that, uh, it's a one-way ticket. Yeah, it's fucking death row. So this would be where some fairly nasty folks would be. Yeah, let's go in here, actually. Do not close any doors. Oh yeah, because you will get yeah. locked in here. Yeah. At least the cells were spacious, kinda. So this is actually in this horrible little corridor here. I think this is where Anna told her story about seeing the smiling man right there. A really nice night to be here in this prison. Certainly don't see anybody right now. I suppose I could pivot and look behind me. Oh, that's good. You look like the Gerber baby. Oh, actually, before we look for these peekers, let's go in this cell and try and make contact. Yeah, with let's do that. Oh, you know what? We could do the mag light in here. Oh, it's been a while. A regular mag light, when turned to the space between on and off, can be turned into a touch lamp, which you can ask spirits to manipulate. However, the light will also randomly turn on and off in this setting. So, responses need to be timely and repetitive for a compelling interaction. It has been set. This is a mag light. You can take your little ghostly prisoner fingers and you know. Fondle it. Fondle it a little bit. Yeah. So why don't we start asking some questions and you feel free to answer us. If you turn on that light, maybe it'll be a, let's treat that as a yes. If you did not like being in here, can you turn on that light? Okay, nothing there. Were you uh, put to death here? Okay, that is a yes. That would make sense because you would only be here if you were put to death. Can you turn off that light right now if you were innocent? Doesn't seem like it. So, you were here because you, you did it. That, that's whatever it is that you were accused of, you did. Yep, yeah, okay. You done crime. That's, well, that's done, a little unsettling. They done, they done crime. Turn that light on if you want us to leave your cell. I guess you could use some company. I was gonna say, turn the light on if you don't mind having uh, two friendly fellas in here with you. It's Ryan and Shane, they call us. That's right. Those are our prison nicknames, Ryan and Shane. Those are also our uh, non-prison nicknames too. Yeah. My, my mom gave me that name. What would you name yourself if you had to pick? Mr. Bean. You'd name yourself Mr. Bean. Mr. Bean? No. No, okay. <laughs> Was this place open in the 80s? I don't think so. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. No, he's oh, right. You have some, no, you're right. Some bean heads in here. You a big fan of Mr. Bean? You like Mr. Bean? When he loses his underpants in the hotel hallway and has to crawl around under the carpet? 
Okay. okay. Well, you know, he's a man of taste. A funny guy. Whoever was in the cell, if you were here for murder, turn on the light. Were you here for thievery? Turn on the light. Didn't we already ask about murder? Thievery? All right, well, we got it, you know? He was killed there, and for thievery, I'm gonna have to look that up. Yeah, all right, bye. That was really some of the craziest stuff I've ever seen in my entire goddamn life. <laughs> Let's set up this REM pod. Yeah, we gotta set it up where the tall man is seen. He's actually seen right here, down a little peaker alley. Earlier in the night, a static cam left in Peeker Alley picked up multiple loud bangs, almost as if someone was hitting the prison bars. And we also picked up what sounds like someone whispering. So this is where the tall man was seen. This is a very long hallway. Could you imagine sleeping every night in this. Every now and then when we would do overnights, it was like, hey, no big deal. But honestly, I think an overnight in a place like this uh, would be pretty, pretty unnerving, you know? Yep. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Yeah, uh, looks like another temperature spike over there. Not an EMF disturbance though. And again, we're pretty far from this. Oh man, I, I'm just thinking of what it's gonna be like when I'm in here later by myself. This might be the solo investigation I never come back from, mentally. Is there somebody down there? Is there a little peeker? Can you come peek over here? Give us a little peek. Come on. I guess shining a light on them, maybe that's a... Maybe they like the darkness, they're like yeah, that. Oh, I can, I can see it on my night vision. If there's anything down there, could you walk towards our voice or anything even behind us on the opposite end? You have full permission to touch any of us or say something. You can move something. Just let us know you're here. Maybe there's something on your mind that you want to get off. If there's any entity over there at all who doesn't like us and would like us to leave, approach the red light or walk towards us. That was weird how I felt uh, light. Oh, God damn it. You know, it's somewhat consistent tonight. You like you? No, I don't. I don't like you. No. Okay. I'm gonna go and grab it. I like imagining that it's crying when you pick it up. Like no, it I imagine it like, turned off. what if it was like a guitar? <laughs> Ghost files, bitch. Let's get out of here. It takes a whole lot of work, time, and money to keep all of our special ghost hunting equipment running. Ooh. Did you not pay the electrical bill this month? The state-of-the-art Ghost Files Boo Goo Containment Unit needs constant Ooh. maintenance, and we both really need to get on top of our ghost budget to make sure we can afford to contain Ooh. all the ghouls and keep everyone safe. Oh, sorry. Lucky for us, Rocket Money is here to help. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. This personal finance app allows you to manage subscriptions, lower bills, build a custom budget, and grow your savings all in one place. Rockets and money are actually the two big things we need to help keep this high-tech ghost machine running. Uh, all right. <laughs> I use Rocket Money to cancel those forgotten app subscriptions, like the spirit scanning app I never used. Rocket Money safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you with just a tap. I can also lower my bills by simply uploading a photo and tapping a button. And then Rocket Money negotiates my bills for me, from internet service bills to cable and phone bills. Maybe even this electric bill while I'm at it. I've set up smart savings to save up for a new Boo Goo containment unit. By choosing the amount and frequency, Rocket Money automatically deposits savings into a smart savings account. Save more, 
and spend less by joining the 3.4 million members using Rocket Money. I've got the hookup. Go to rocketmoney.com slash ghostfiles or by clicking the link in the description to get started for free or unlock even more features with premium. That's rocketmoney.com slash ghostfiles to get started for free. Get your money right so you can focus on more important things oh, like ghost hunting. Good ghost, did you, are you kidding me? Are you, it would. The next area we'll investigate is section 3D, which is the basement solitary confinement for housing unit three. Each building has its own fun little solitary confinement area each with their own delightful flavor. And this one tastes like physical illness and deep feelings of discomfort. Full-blown conversations have been heard through the halls. Audience investigator Allison Mosley and her entire paranormal tour spotted a figure peering from behind the end of the hallway for an extended amount of time until it slowly retreated into the darkness. And to add some levity, some have said that if you whistle and say, come here, boy, a ghost dog will come closer. Love that. We love a ghost dog. I do love a ghost dog. And pretty easy. I don't have to bring a bone or anything. I just have to say, come here, boy. Come here, boy. This is also one of the uh, few stories about shadow people that I've heard where it kind of lingers. Normally they're like fast, peeking out and they're gone. But to have one that's just kind of like. Oh, hello. Spooky. Yeah, theatrics. I hope know. we see them. So now we're going into building three's solitary confinement. Great. Which every building has their own. And this one actually is more tame than the other ones, but. Oh. Okay. A ghost. A little bit of a, it's a ghost light. Uh, so this is a uh, solitary confinement 3D. People feel ill down here. Also, Allison Mosley saw uh, a dark figure kind of peek its head down the hall here and just kind of slowly retract. We got any peekers down here? Can you show us a good peek from like maybe even behind that like thing right there? Yeah. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> I sold it, right? You did sell it. That was good. I should become a peeker. What if you just got dragged right there? That would be, be crazy. That'd be, that'd be sick as hell. Before we get into it too much though, I will say that all the people who work here, when asked about the prison, they aren't scared of this place. They're not even scared of any of the inmates, but they did they're say- scared of the dog. That they're scared of the dog and they don't like talking about it even. They won't even tell us the name of the dog. And I think it's because they suspect the dog isn't actually a dog. They think it's a devil dog. Or some sort of entity. Should we go look for the dog over here? Yeah. Come here, here boy. boy. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. I got ham. Come here. I got ham in my pockets, boy. Here, doggy, doggy. Come here, boy. <laughs> Ugh, this place sucks. Let's just stand still. Maybe let's give him a chance to find us. Come here, boy. Oh my. I'm getting static on my EVP. Like electric disturbance. This is weird. What was that? What was that? Well, you heard that too, right? I did hear well, something. What did it sound like to you? A rustle. Yeah. Is there somebody down here with us? Okay, we're gonna turn on this uh, device here that you may be able to use to communicate with us. It's called an ovulus. The ovulus takes environmental readings that spirits are said to manipulate, such as temperature or electromagnetic fields, and converts them Interrupt. into corresponding words New moon. or phonetic sounds. Whatever's down here, what do you want us to listen to? The dog? Together. Oh. September. It's September, that is correct. And we're together here. Can you tell us where we're at? Can you say Missouri? Or prison. Prison? Here we are in the cell. Do you like that? We heard there's a dog down here. Easy. Yeah, what do you mean easy? They don't want you to talk about the dog. They, you guys scared of this dog too? Even the ghosts are scared of the dog? Anybody in this cell uh, who, who... It's so crazy that you could just rest your hand on the ceiling. I mean, you can too. I guess you can't. I have to like... I can, it's, you're, it is you're like, full pop, It is like dude. quite relaxing to just lean against the ceiling. You, I feel like Gandalf. You, it's freakish. Daddy. <laughs> daddy? Did it say daddy? It said daddy. Disturbed. Ooh, disturbed. Disturbing Disturb me. daddy. Disturbing Disturb me, daddy. daddy. We gotta put that on a t-shirt. Built in 1868 for post-Civil War criminals, Housing Unit 4 is the prison's oldest building, and it seems to be the center of paranormal activity. It's reported that disembodied voices have been captured here. 
visitors' equipment would malfunction. Some have had feelings of a ghostly hand touching them and an overwhelming smell of Comic-Con potency body odor. <laughs> well, you're still having fun this season, huh? <laughs> One delightful entity, a man with half a face, is known to appear next to visitors in this area, transferring his distress and pain onto them until they are so overwhelmed that they flee the area. Also, there's this deeply disturbing photo on the internet of what some speculate is a hanged inmate. I like the half face guy. So many of these ghosts you hear them, it's like, it's a woman wearing a white dress. Give me the freaks, you know? All right, well, let's take a look at it. I like that it's just a Snapchat story. Cell blocks. Cell blocks. Yeah, look at that. Cool. <laughs> Wait, what do you think that is? You know, it's a guy there. It's a, it's a guy. It's a guy. I think it's a pretty compelling piece of evidence. It's a shape of a person. Maybe they're hanged. Yeah, that's uh, that's four floors up. Person okay. obviously cannot be uh, float in there unless, of course, they're a ghost or Clark Kent. So I, I feel pretty good about you admitting that that does indeed look like a person. Or David Blaine. Or David Blaine, you're right. Anyways, let's go to location here and see if we could capture this floating ghost. Let's just turn off our lights to just appreciate how horrifically dark this yeah. actually is. Yeah. That is a, <laughs> that's the darkest building we've seen thus far. This definitely looks like well, I mean, it abandoned. It just looks straight up abandoned. I thought the other building was creepy because it had those ghostly green lights inside, but the complete absence of light is perhaps even more This unsettling. is awful. This is a building four, and we're gonna move into just a, a general investigation in here. This is also where the uh, photo of the hanging apparition was caught. Great. And looking at how dark this place is, that's the least of my worries, honestly. <laughs> I could give a shit less. I can't believe you're gonna go in here alone later. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> Fuck yourself. <laughs> Go fuck yourself, building. Wow, it smells weird in here. <sighs> Can we just turn off the light? <laughs> I'm gonna lose my fucking marbles in here, dude. I'm announcing our presence. We've arrived. That's a nice thing to do to the ghosts, let them know you're here. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna this take is Ryan, I'm Shane. That's right. I'm gonna take a picture right now. Is it okay if I take your picture? Because uh, somebody caught up, I'm, I guess I'm talking to a hanging apparition, so you probably can't respond. That's true. But I'm gonna take a picture now. Nice. Let's just take a couple. Great shot, you're a real shutterbug. Oh look, this is one of the cells that would be for about seven you know, people or so. Oof. Six men per cell. Oh, are you kidding me, dude? What the S fuck? Six people in here? Oh, this had to stink. First off, I'm very sorry this happened to you. This is not great by any sense of it. J Jesus. What? How, how did they live? No, this is awful. I'm starting to think prisons are inhumane. Okay, let's turn on the ovulus. This is a device that you could use to speak to us. And maybe uh, you've been having trouble communicating and this will help. I heard a faint skitter. I didn't hear any skittering. I heard it off in the distance somewhere in one of these rooms. Should we go look? Sure. Any little rats in here, little mice? Cool. Mattress. Blaze. Uh, is this where you used to blaze it on this mattress? That sounds nice. You're not responding to the fact that she said mattress when you walked up to the mattress? What are you fucking high? Well, I just was more distracted. She, you walked up to the mattress and she said mattress and you were like, hey, well, you like to blaze it? Well, it's because it said blaze. Sure, but it all said mattress when you walked up to the mattress. Yeah, but it gets overpowered by Go blazing. be a scared guy. Do but your it, thing. Oh, it's oh. hard for me to get scared when I'm thinking of blazing it. What'd she say? Material. There's material on the mattress, Ryan. What did you do in this room? What'd you do for fun? She says mattress, you roll right past it. Unbelievable. Why did she said blaze first? She said mattress. But blaze after. Housing unit four also has its own brand of solitary confinement, a medieval style dungeon nicknamed the hole. 
The cells in here are completely devoid of daylight or any source of fresh air and held the worst criminals, from death row inmates to particularly violent prisoners. There was actually a guy who was in solitary confinement here in the hole, Firebug Johnson, who was down there for 18 years. His name was Firebug Johnson? His name was Firebug Johnson. He did end up killing four inmates via fire, but he also tried to burn the prison down, so. And he published a book after he got out saying, was uh, that, was like, page one. Oh! <laughs> you know what, before we get to the location, I'm gonna buy the book and I'm gonna read it. How long do you think you'd last in this hole? I think probably 50 years. It's a specific number. How about you? Well, 20 minutes. Inmates who stayed here were drugged up with antipsychotics and were known as the bobbleheads on account of them being able to do little more than bob their heads. And some who couldn't withstand the isolation would kill themselves by slamming their head into the walls. Solitary confinement cells have sometimes been the viewing area of a terrifying eight foot tall shadow figure that occasionally opens its mouth and silently screams until people leave. <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, so you're more like a scared scream. You kind of look like Nick Cage, actually. Scared. Angry. Scared. Angry. Quicker. Scared. Yeah, okay, good. Perhaps related, Kelly Carinder and Hector Lugo captured this enormous figure on SLS down in the dungeon. Let's take a look. That's our eight foot ghoul? No, you'll Whoa, see. Whoa, there's two of them. So look, there's a person. Oh, right that's there. a person. Whoa, look how fucking that's, big he Yeah, that's, that's sort of an it follows ghoul. I just like the fact that there's supposed to be a tall person down here, and then we see this giant ass stick figure. It's pretty good. Yeah, good one. Well, what if we get a giant ass stick figure? <laughs> I'd love to see it. I'd love to see a big scary stick figure come up to us and go. It'd have to be a pretty big stick figure to look big next to you, though. I mean, eight feet will do it. All right, so now we're going down to the dungeon. This is the place that has no light, no fresh air, and it's also where Callie Carinder and Hector Lugo sent us their evidence of SLS That's footage. That's where they saw a little dancing man. No, not a little dancing man, a big dancing big man. Big dancer. Please turn off the showers after use. Got oh, that's, it. That's very green of them. Hey look, there he is right there, Firebug Johnson, the guy who was here for almost 18 years. Oh, uh, we read his book. Uh, good writer, a little bit racist. All right, yep, All this right. is pretty dungeon-like. Oh, this sucks. To be here for 18 years. Oh, this sucks, folks. Oh, no. It's pretty humid, too. It's hot. If they locked me up here, my nickname would not be Firebug. It'd be dead as hell, Bergara. <laughs> It'd be Piss Pants Bergara. For the sake of it, let's turn off our lights just to see the absence of it. Okay. I bet it's gonna be dark as fuck. Let's find out. E wow. If you don't have these devices in your hands, you can't see anything within like an inch of your face. No. This is awful. Holy shit. Now, now you sort of understand why people would uh, bang know, their heads against the wall. Go yeah. crazy in here. All day, all night, just nothing but pitch black. Yeah, I would lose my mind in here. Okay, so you could see this is the inside of one of the cells in the night vision on this SLS. Let's see if we could catch our tall man. Anybody in here with me? Is there a particularly tall fella in here? Nothing? I do want to inform you, you are a ghost. You don't have to be here anymore. You could leave. Yeah, according to Ryan's rules, like ghosts can, you know, hop on spirit air and, uh, yeah, take a little trip. Go to Acapulco. This does not have to be your life anymore. You could go. Wait, check this out. Yeah, real Blair Witch. That's pretty good. Actually, let me get some. Oh. I put my face in a spider web. <laughs> Gross. Here's the mag light. I figured if anybody's gonna turn on a light, it's Firebug Johnson. If there's anybody in here that has something to say about their time here, can you turn off that light? What have you got to say? The acoustics in here are... I mean, it's truly dead quiet. All right, let's just actually be quiet for a second because I do want to hear how pitch black quiet it is. Is there anybody down here that's in pain that could turn that light off? Are you in pain? Oh, okay, yeah. Do you like us being here? Is it nice to have some company in here? If so, turn the light on. If you'd like us to stay here, Forever. Turn the light on. Now 
No. Yeah, we're going to be here by ourselves later because Ryan's going to come down here drinking solo. I'm not solo. coming down here. It's possible. To anybody who, who's in here, tall man, short man, medium man, I don't give a shit. Not coming back down here. I feel like you might be coming back down here. It's not going to happen, sir. Mm. So if you want something from this guy right here, you better rip my beanie off my head. Oh, fuck you. If you like the idea of maybe showing yourself to Ryan when he's all alone later, turn the light on. Or do you want to hang out with Shane? He'll come back down here alone. That's right. Turn that light on if you want to spend some time with a fellow tall man. Tall man. I think it's not. I'm a little offended. You know what? Why don't I get out of this dungeon? I don't like being in here. No? I'm just going to say it. But you had your chance. And I don't even want to be curt with any of you because it feels wrong. I just, I just want to get out of here. I don't like it. Yeah, you won't be coming back here. I will not. And now we move to the final phase of the hunt, our individual investigation of the entire penitentiary. This is gonna be really fun. I have a great job, I love my job. It's been a while since we No were better job than mine. Just an absolute unit like this, walking around on our lonesome. 47 acres is a lot of space. That's huge. It's a lot of space for, for me to walk. You can go down in that hole? Well, well I guess you are, I'll send you there. You're gonna make me, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if so it was up to fun. me. I forgot about all the power I have on this show. Anyways, let's, uh, let's get this over. Here's how our solo investigation will work. Shane and I will each have 20 minutes of alone time in the location. Shane will go first, and at the end of his time, we'll hide a walkie-talkie in the building. Once Shane returns, he will give me a hint on where to find said walkie-talkie. Then, it's my turn. I'll enter the building, and only after I radio back to Shane with the hidden walkie-talkie will the clock start on my 20 minutes of solo investigation. Let the games begin. We're here again. It's solo time. I could use a little reminder when it's 10 minutes. I could do that. So that I know to switch buildings. You got it. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens, you know? It's actually quite a long walk over there, so. Yeah. All right, I'm walking to uh, building three. Big brick bitch of a building. Uh, where to? I'm really going to challenge myself to not freak out. I'm gonna have to trick myself that I'm not scared. Just bringing chill, chill good vibes for everybody to, to, to feed on. Okay, so this is Death Row, where we've got all sorts of uh, pals. Who's out here? Tall man? Shadow baby? Peeker? The dog from hell? I believe this is where the tall man hung out. Feel free to reach out to me in any way. I'm gonna shut my light off now and bask in the darkness. Hmm. Why, that is pitch black. This is gonna be a real mental test for me because I think if I go in there like I normally have, I will die. And this place is big enough that if I have a heart attack, no one will find me. You know, earlier when we were here, you know, I've got my little handy cam. He's got his little bullshit toys. They always emit a little bit of light. Now that I don't have those, uh, it's pitch black, very dark. Uh, I'm gonna be silent now because that's scary. I think Shane's chilling, you know? I'm gonna bring my Shane energy to this. Not like, like crazy energy, but I'm gonna bring like the part of his brain that's able to compartmentalize and go into chill vibes. But then again, Shane doesn't have to compartmentalize because he doesn't believe in any of this. So now I'm down in the, I believe this was solitary? If there had been nothing that happened tonight, I would still be nervous about this solo. So the fact that there has been things that have happened, not great. Not great at all. Once again, that's why I gotta change the mindset. You're gonna see a new Ryan this season, Zen Ryan. I'm gonna duck into one of these cells now. Uh, I'm gonna turn my light off. Feel free to speak to me via my magical box. Give me a word. Equation. Okay. Uh, anything else you wanna say? So off. off. You want me to turn this off? Is that it? Casket. Now we're getting somewhere. In many ways, this was like a casket, wasn't it? Uh, that's a 10 minute warning for you. Thank you so much. See, does he hear, you hear, does he sound worried? He doesn't sound worried at all. All right, that's our 10 minutes. We're gonna relocate to the other building. 
I don't want to acknowledge them as I walk past. Is this how you walk all the time in your neighborhood, like Michael Myers on Coke? Interesting. Shane's walking from building three to building four right now. Look at this absolutely horrific place. I mean, I've never been to the Sistine Chapel. I'm gonna guess this place is cooler, more interesting to look at. Shane actually isn't really a brave guy because he doesn't believe this is real. He's not like a person afraid of bears going into the woods, you know what I mean? But he's not afraid of anything, so it's kind of hard to say he's not a brave guy. What do you call somebody who's not afraid of anything that goes into scary situations? Is it actually brave or is he just a lunatic? Hey ghosts, uh, my name's Shane. I'm right here in the middle. You can uh, kill me if you want. I heard a strange noise just now. I genuinely did, I don't know what that was. Is there a ghost over there? Huh? You fuck? Like Shane right now could be getting stabbed brutally to death. And I bet you I wouldn't even hear it if he was in that dungeon. I'm really gonna try now to give a yell that Ryan will hear out there and think that I have actually seen something upsetting. Time to give a big spooky yell like I said. <laughs> ah! See if that gets him. Not to saying that, like, that I think he's getting stabbed to death, but he could be, and that's enough for me, you know? Maybe he'll think I've been murdered. I thought that was pretty good. Who knows what I'm gonna see in there, and who knows how long it will take before you guys know I've seen it. He's not radioing me, so maybe he didn't hear it, so now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna yell as if a ghost is picking me up and throwing me uh, at the ceiling. <laughs> That was you, right? I should answer eventually just to make sure that he knows, but I want to let him, I want to let him stew for a little bit, you know? We just heard like some weird girl screaming. Kind of sounded like a girl screaming. Uh, Shane, was that you? Was what me? The strange screaming, that wasn't you? Oh yeah, that was me. Oh. Okay. Well, I wasn't rolling on my EVP. Ryan's gonna be so mad at me. Oops. Okay. All right, I'm going down to the dungeon, home of uh, many, many a uh, legendary figure. Shane, if you're in the dungeon, can you go into that really scary dungeon and then uh, make yourself as tall as possible and say there could only be one tall man in this entire prison and it's me? Yeah, can do. Is there another tall man in here? Because I don't see him. Ryan has asked me to uh, enter this room and make myself as big and tall as possible. So let me do that. And let me state for the record that there can only be one tall man. Yes, and it's me. Sure would love to be put in my place. I'm gonna shut my light out so that it's completely pitch black in here. It would be a great time to just scare the living Christ out of me. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Maybe he's dead. That's time. All right, I'm coming. Uh, we're gonna hide this walkie now so that Ryan has to endure miseries to find it. I think the best bet is to put it down here. And set it right here. Yeah, good spot. Well, ghouls, it's been a treat. Seems like uh, the Noodle Man has gone undefeated once more. Here he comes. Oh boy, look at him. Oh, Ryan, there you are. Oh, 
Oh. This would really bother old Ryan, but now the new Ryan is here for chill vibes. You know what? I'll tell you one genuine thing. Sure. I did hear a little noise in there. Yeah, did you? Like a little, you know, so there's something. Well, I'm going to be very chill when I'm in there. You're going zen vibes? I'm going completely zen. Well, let's get that helmet on me, huh? Oh, okay. So what are you, like a horse now? I'm doing the power stance right now. Powerful. That's this good. Is what it makes you feel powerful. That's good. You get out there, you give those ghosts hell, all right? This I'm time. gonna be the most chill man there ever was. To yeah, live. I didn't know, ain't never known anybody as chill as you. All really? right, let's do this, baby. There he goes. It's like watching your kid go to kindergarten for the first time. Chill vibes. <sighs> I'm actually not my fear. I'm stronger than my fear. Well, if anything comes out, I could just punch it or run away. All right, into this dungeon. Let's see, nothing there. Whew. Nothing here. Okay, so he wouldn't hide it somewhere crazy. I legitimately heard something in building four. I don't know what it was. It could have just been, you know, a little skitterer. I don't think a ghost is, you know, moving little walnut shells across the ground like. Hey, dude, not here either. All right, dilly dilly. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> All right, bro, it's not there. Chill, I'm going here then. What? Not in the group therapy room? <laughs> Shit, all right, that's fine too. But, you know, no one Shane is the last one. Yep. All righty, found the walkie. Good on ya. Do, do me a favor and go in one of those cells and uh, just turn the lights off and stand there for 30 seconds. All right. He wants me to stand here? <sighs> okay. Here we go. Lights are going off. The reception's a little spotty down there, so he might not hear me. You got it. Who's doing it? No. All right. All right, you got it, bud. Did that, 30 seconds. Very proud of you. You know what? I like this place. I do. I do, I do, I do. So I'm about a minute and 36 seconds in. I, I truly thought it was about five minutes in, but you know, that's fine. That's fine, that's fine. I get it, this place sucks. I wouldn't want to stay here either. So, I'm sorry. This place is really, really great. I don't obviously support uh, prison uh, industry. But uh, you know, it's cool to see a prison, you know, in the same way that it's uh, cool to see a tornado, you know? Uh, obviously tornadoes hurt people, but boy oh boy, fun to look at. Oh look, this is that really awful cell where like seven people will be like shoved into this shit. Check this shit out. Ooh. It's not the best, I'll say that. All I'm focused on right now is being chill. Got a little mattress in here. It's like a shit bucket. Sometimes life isn't about doing what you want to do. I, mean, I know that's rich saying that in a prison, but I'm talking purely about my experience right now because uh, that's not selfish at all. Chillest guy in the world right here, look at my face. You know, there's a certain prison aesthetic that reminds me of uh, all the other prisons we've been to on account of their prisons. Bars, toilets, uh, birds. These are sort of the things you see at places like this. You know, if this was like a game room, like if you put like a poker table in here or something, you could probably give it some chiller vibes, mini fridge, that kind of thing. You know, just try and make the best of uh, the situation I'm in right now. I've got about 10 more seconds. All right, well, I'm just gonna skedaddle just gonna on out of here. Ugh. I'm just gonna take it a little leisurely stroll here. Just the chillest vibes you'll ever see. Oh, here he comes. Don't acknowledge him. Don't give him the satisfaction. Actually, we're going to be completely silent. Film crew, look at that. They're all having a good time. Don't you love to see it? Nobody look at him, nobody speak to him. Ah, oh, what a great night. This is the best night of my life. I could do this all day. I can't imagine it going any better than it's going right now. That is fucking horrible ass building. I love you, horrible ass building. You're such a nice building. I can't wait to go inside you. That sounded gross, but you know what I meant. Just chill vibes. Okay. Wow, this looks horrific, but it's okay, because I love this building. And time is starting again. 
Okay, so now we're in building three. Let me just pull my pants up here. Just taking a look around these cages, you know? Let's walk up here. What the fuck's going on up here? I'm bringing positive vibes, a good energy here. I don't know what area I'm actually in right now, but it's kind of lit. Not lit in the sense of like, this is sick, but more like lit, like I have all lights here. So let's move this way. If I were in prison here, I think I would last a long time. I'd try to make friends with people as best I could. Try to get really good at making soup or something. At ease, fellas. I'm a chill guy walking through. No threat here. I hear some rustling above, but that's okay. This building cannot scare me because I'm not my fear. I am stronger than it. Do jobs, suck up to the wardens, you know? Rat on people. <laughs> do whatever I gotta do to get the, you know, top of the heap. Oh, wait a second, is this the fucking exit? What is this? Whoa, holy shit, that's the fucking crew out there. How the fuck did he end up over there? That's nuts. I'd rat his ass out immediately. The sun will come out tomorrow. Let's go upstairs. And I believe this is actually where I heard a noise earlier. So, oh, Jesus, almost tripped. <laughs> he, he's not even, a, is that even a spot that we invent? What are you doing? You're not supposed to be in a part of the prison. Get the fuck out of there. I will move to a different part. Don't speak very much for the next like five minutes or so. Just, just talk to the ghosts in a, in a way that is not cheery or zen at all. I don't know how to do that though, dude, because I'm the new Ryan. I don't like the new Ryan. That's a shame because he really likes you, dude. In fact, the new Ryan really hopes that you have a good night. Why don't you go to the end of the death row hallway? Face the end where the tall man is often seen. Turn off your light and stare at it for two full minutes without speaking. All right, we're in death row now. Not a great place, you know. Okay, we're going to the end of the hallway. We'll turn it off the light. This is where the tall guy dude is. Chill vibes, eight minutes. Okay. Wow, look at that sight. Like, that is truly horrific. Like, if you're just looking at that, it's like, how do you look at that and not lose your mind? It's a good thing I'm the chill Ryan now, though. Anyways, here goes the light. Okay. Ryan's trying a Zen route, which I think is uh, ill-advised, both for his own personal growth and for the watchability of this show. Maybe people like to see him do that. I personally think it's boring. You know, we've already got Mr. Chill, you know, Mr. Chill vibes over here. I'm kicking back, I'm having a good time, I'm going in there, I'm Johnny Chuckles. Uh, you can't have Ryan also doing that. So I hope he gets murdered by a ghost uh, right now. All right, well, that was the two minutes. All right, Cheney boy, well, that was two minutes in the dark. Oh, those uh, actually down that hallway. So violent. Um, there were some bumps that were happening. They've gotten closer and closer to me. But you know, the old Ryan would have freaked out about that. New Ryan was like, "Wow, that's really interesting." That went on for so long that I forgot you were doing it. <laughs> I know you've been playing it pretty chill, but we're down to the final four minutes here. I want you to scream as loud as you can that you want the ghost. Well, first, turn your light off. Then scream as loud as you can that you want the ghost to kill you. Beg for them to kill you. Then after about a minute or so of that, uh, just bask in silence for a little bit. Okay, going in the last cell of the other hallway and I'm gonna beg for them to kill me. I'll actually uh, hold down the microphone so you can hear me. Is that cool? Yeah, I love that. Oh my God! Could you please fucking kill me, ghost? Please, please put me out of my Come in here and kill me! Oh yeah, you can hear it from here. Ah, 
Well, that was certainly an adventure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, this building, everyone in here could go fuck themselves. You did, it. did it, dude. Yeah, as soon as I stepped out, the facade dropped. Yeah. Did you have fun in there though? Oh, uh, no, I didn't. No, no, I hated every second of it, but um, yeah. I did it with a smile. Honestly, it's kind of all a blur. It feels like I didn't do it. Yeah. I kind of disassociated that entire time. That's one way to do it, I guess, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if disassociation is the best method, but. Uh... Oh, it worked for me, because okay. it's like I was sitting here and now I'm standing here and it's like, how did what I get happened from, in between? How did I get from here to here? Anyways, well, let's go. Let's get out of here let's, so I let's can Let's absolutely All leave. Right. For 170 years, Missouri State Penitentiary has trapped countless souls within its walls. Souls that have reminded us of their dark past every year since. Did we actually capture the eyes of something moving in the darkness? Did we make contact with Fast Jack? Did we hear prisoners still trapped in their cells? Our job as investigators is to collect and present questions, possibilities. Interpretation, however, solely belongs with you. But for our part, Missouri State Penitentiary can now be locked away in the ghost files. Holy shit. I saw them there. I was very excited for you to uh, oh. catch them. <laughs>